Hi, welcome back to another episode of Coldstream Rod Shop. I'm Derek Fraser. In this week's episode, we're actually back working on the 40 Plymouth. We kind of set it aside for a little while while we finished off the five window coupe, which should be going out of here shortly. But the next up on the 40 Plymouth chassis is that we have to work on the brake and the clutch pedal, and then also fashion, make up the engine and transmission mounts. So for the Brake and the clutch pedal, what I did, I bought a kit from uh, Paul Horton's welder series out of water, uh, make sure it's water close to Waterloo in Ontario. We'll insert a link. We've talked about them before. We've done a video on their shop before. But what we've got, yeah, hopefully this don't knock this over. Uh, we have a brake and a clutch pedal here. We've got the, the I guess the, uh, what would I call it here? Actually where they mount and they, they pivot off of and then there's a, a bar here and a bracket so that the master cylinder and the power uh, brake booster could be mounted further back so right now here in the front the camera lady wants to come over here um, we have the original brake and the clutch pedal here so what I need to do is actually put these in so that these two pedals are actually in the same place um, and then bend them so that they come through the same place in the body which is sitting outside and I have to do that without sticking the body on it. So my plan here right now is basically to set up some metal pins or whatever um, it's like markers so that the metal will come here and here on this axis and figure out where these points are so I'll have something to to make a reference to because what I'll have to do is actually cut this section out and then weld this in so that those pedals are in the same place and then make room for the uh, the pivot arm to come back here and then mount this master cylinder bracket back here somewhere so quite a little bit to figure out on this one and then the second half of that is once I have that installed then I have to start working on making the engine mount so on both of our vehicles over there the Model A and the 32 pickup there's a style of engine mounts that basically use the old flathead Ford uh, rubber pucks so what I'll be doing is I'll be making the mounts to go on the engine and then these will be sitting here so that these will sit they'll come in and actually sit on top of the rubber mounts. There's other styles you can use, they're just as good, but I, I just kind of like these because when you put the engine in, they come straight down, they sit onto it, and you can shift it around. You don't have something where you have to jimmy the holes to the side. Then for the transmission mount, there's a T5 transmission that, that basically bolts up to the 350 shove that's over in the other garage. I'm going to have to cut out this original transmission mount and then basically fabricate one back here somewhere. So not sure how far we're going to get on this episode, but I mean, those are the two things we're working on next on this chassis. Uh, first up will be the brake and the clutch pedal. So watch along and see how we do it. So today I'm going to work on the 40 Plymouth chassis. One thing we're going to work on next is the positioning of the brake and the clutch pedal. So one thing of note is that the mechanism for the uh, 40 Plymouth actually sits kind of above the frame. As you can see here, there, right there is the two holes for the brake and the clutch pedal. And the mechanism and the master cylinder actually sat in this area here, kind of above the frame, which is a little different than what I'm used to working with on the third, you know, the Model A 32, 34 Ford. So what I've done so far, I've double checked on this, I've got lots of space, but in here on the 40 Plymouth chassis, um, I'm just basically at the stage now where I'm getting ready to remove the uh, original brake and clutch pedal. But what I did in order to make sure that I put them back in the same place, I made this jig here um, to basically show or guide me as to where the brake pedals and the clutch pedal will go through the, um, the body. So this point and this point here are the critical part. So I want to replicate the kit that I got from Welder Series so it goes up through the body in the same place. The hinge point is not as critical because we've got a lot of space here like I showed you 
um, on the body. So right now I've made marks on the frame where this this particular axis is. Um, next up, what I'm going to do is going to cut this mechanism out or try to unbolt it and take it away. Um, and then start trying to position the, uh, well, I've kind of got it all apart here on the, the bench right now, but there are the two uh, brake and clutch pedals. They're both going to have to be bent because right now they're too close together, but that's the way the kit comes. I have to get the same kind of spacing as what you see there between the, the clutch and the brake pedal. So follow along and uh, as we put this into the 40 Plymouth chassis. So here's all the bits and pieces that I just took out. Um, actually came out pretty good with the impact wrench and, and a wrench. Uh, everything took a couple minutes. Um, so what I've done now is I've just basically clamped the welder series. Ow. Sorry about that. Welders, not much room here. The welder series um, brake and clutch pedal assembly on the frame. Um, and what I can see is that um, like right now, that arm slides in and out of the hole where the hole is going to be on the floor, just kind of like I want it to. Um, it's not positioned exactly where it needs to be, but I know now that I'm close. So what I'm going to do is actually now take these two arms and spread them an inch and a half either side. So I've got to bend them or cut them or, or something so that they're actually, I think it's four and a half inches apart from this point to this point. So they're going to sit on either side of this piece, then reposition this bracket over here a little further. Um, and uh, But we're on our way. Um, obviously, we're gonna have to cut the frame, but I kind of knew that. This support here originally is for the, uh, uh, I think the master cylinder or some, actually it might even be an exhaust, but uh, nevertheless, this piece will have to be cut and adjusted and then probably reinforced. And then the old piece over here has to be cut off as well. Ultimately, that transmission mount is coming off anywhere because the T5 will sit back further. Um, the first step, though, is to get the clutch and pedal assembly in inside the frame rails here. The, um, there's going to be a rod going from here back because the master cylinder is actually going to mount back here somewhere with a, a power booster on it. So uh, anyway, making progress here. Follow along. So here we are so far, I have both of the pedals mocked in relative to the uh, bracket that I put on the frame here. Kind of happy where it's at right now. Um, it still looks funny to me because I am so used to having the pivot point below the frame. But as I described at the beginning of the video with the Plymouth, um, there's an area right here underneath the, uh, the firewall where it's all open. Uh, the original one actually had a pivot point that sat about three quarters of an inch behind this. So we've got plenty of clearance. So right now I've cut away. Um, I'm probably gonna have to cut a little more away here. So my intention is actually to make a piece of metal that comes up and comes up to this point and joins back on the frame. So I'll, I'll kind of make this um, continuous again, but also maintain access for this particular hole here. Cause what's gonna happen is that there'll be a rod with a, uh, a heim joint or whatever that goes on here and then this rod goes to the back and like I said earlier the master cylinder uh, for the brakes as well as um, the master cylinder for the clutch I think is going to come back here too there's a bracket over in the bench I, I would have shown you just a little while ago so making progress on that uh, right now it's a matter of making the metal pieces here and kind of tidying this up and making it look as though it's completely intentional. Um, but making progress on it now. Here we are. Uh, I've made, I've done quite a bit of work on this, but right now we've progressed it to the point where I've got the brake and the clutch pedal in the right position. The, they've been bent and welded now so that we've got the right gap between them. I removed the uh, supporting bracket or the I guess the gauge or the guide or whatever here. And what I've done, actually had to relieve it a little bit more here so that the, the brake pedal will actually go all the way down. Um, then I reinforced the side of the frame here. There's a, a, a plate that now comes up the side plus a gusset along here. Because what I was trying to do, I didn't want to permanently put this in here, but because I want to be able to actually undo this bolt 
and undo the bolt, the two bolts here and actually remove it because when the body goes in, I'm not entirely sure that we can put the body in and bring the brake and the, and the uh, clutch pedal into the body. Um, so I'm leaving it with the flexibility so that we can undo these bolts, pull them out of the way, and then put them back in after the body's on the frame. The other thing I've, I chose to do was the inside of the frame over here. I put a boxing plate onto it uh, and welded this in. I just wanted a little more rigidity on it. So right now what we have is we've got the uh, rod coming back from the brake pedal. I've since ordered a second rod from welder series that's going to come back to the clutch pedal and here is the um, master cylinder bracket which would mount back here somewhere. I'm going to have to cut a hole for the uh, master cylinder for the clutch um, but I'm not going to do that because I'm waiting for the um, brake booster and the master cylinder come in because I want to put those on and then actually position this in the right place. Um, so this is as far as I'm going to go for the moment with this until the parts come in and then I'll carry on um, working on that. The other thing I did today because what we can actually work on something else here on the Plymouth frame while we're waiting for those parts. <clears throat> Try not to kill myself here. Um, I cut out the original transmission uh, mount that was actually it was right there so that's cut out. So next up on the Plymouth frame I'm going to start making some engine brackets for the small block Chevy engine. Um, we'll probably bring the engine here for the transmission kind of hang it in place and then kind of start making our engine mounts and our transmission mounts because like right now nothing's going to affect the pedals. I can still work on this in parallel. So I've inched forward a little bit on a 40 Plymouth chassis. I was actually waiting for the power booster and the Corvette master cylinder come in, which it has, which is fantastic. Um, the second piece I needed, I actually needed another rod to go on the clutch pedal here. And ultimately I'm going to have to cut some of this bracing away for the rods to fit through. So essentially what we want to do is we're going to mount the master cylinder um, and the, the power booster back here. Um, it'll sit underneath the seat. Ultimately there'll be a hole in the floor and a panel to put fluid into it and that's kind of all cool. However, there's an, another twist to this. Um, before I go any farther forward, the transmission that goes with this has a hydraulic clutch. Um, the owner provided me with the original slave cylinder and master cylinder for the clutch. I'm not 100% sure I can reuse this. Um, if I can find a way to, I guess, uh, move the or change the, uh, the line here so that it would ultimately, you know, kind of go down here and up there. Um, but I think to make a neater application and, and basically upgrade with an I think what I'd like to do is get another new master cylinder and a new slave cylinder and then run like a steel hydraulic line um, going up to it. That's or a line with uh, you know um, kind of like a brake line or something going up to it. So right now I got to try and figure that out before I actually weld this in place here because what I'll have to do is make modify this bracket right here on the left to basically support the clutch master cylinder. So no matter what, the clutch master cylinder has to go here. So I'll be extending this plate and then cutting a hole here so that either that master cylinder or another one will fit here. So more to come on this. So parts finally came in. I was waiting to get a master cylinder for the clutch. The master cylinder we got with it, I think was out of an S10 or something. And the issue was, is that the master cylinder, um, there was some sort of valve or something, it stuck down way below the frame. So what we needed to do is get something more compact. There's a Willwood master cylinder that you can buy for clutches. It's got a standard 3H24 fitting on here. So the intention is now to put that on the welder series bracket and it would go here. But before I did that, uh, what I have to do 
is finish off all the boxing plates. So before we had done a suction from here to here on both sides um, and then across the back and then what we wanted to do was um, put some more boxing plates in place here. Now the X-member itself, there's a lot of rivets. Um, I may go around and weld around some of those rivets, but the factory actually did weld a lot of the joints, so it's not just riveted. So I'll take a quick look at that. This is not going to be like a road racing vehicle or anything. Uh, we just want to stiffen things up, or that's what the customers asked me to do. So. I'm going to carry on. Um, this side is all welded. Uh, it's going to be dressed. That side is tack welded, so I have to finish welding that and then grind, f finish grind it. There's a couple little pieces here um, that I want to make up as well. Anywhere is where I can actually access and put like a boxing plate. I'm going to do that and try and tie as much of it together as I can. So we'll do those. And then I'm going to take the welder series along with the two master cylinders and then we'll either I don't know if I can use it as is. I may actually have to extend it because of the width, but we'll see. Um, I'll work through that and I'll show you what we do. I use my plasma cutter on a video. We'll see how this goes. It's uh, just getting used to it now. It's on. And that's it. One whole cut. As you can see from the time-lapse video, or at least I hope you can see, um, I extended the welder series bracket about an inch and a half on this side, and I used my new plasma cutter to cut a hole so that the clutch master cylinder will go through it. Um, I then welded this in place with the two master cylinders in place um, and set things up, but then I discovered 
where I felt as though there was too much flex in this bracket um, after I applied pressure onto it. It wasn't a lot, but it was enough that I would rather there was no flex into it. So I then actually put another piece of steel. Um, it's 3 16 plate steel from this point until it touched the X member here. So you probably can't see from that angle the plate, but you can actually see the weld penetration mark here where I've welded it from this side. So now this master cylinder uh, bracket actually is welded to the inside of the frame and here, so there's, there, there's no movement in it anymore. So um, that's all in place. The other thing I had to do was that these bars when you buy from welder series, they get three eight threads on either end, which work perfectly for the master cylinder and um, the brackets on them. But for the clutch master cylinder is a 5 16 thread. So basically had to get a piece of steel tubing and then thread it and then weld it on here so that it works for the clutch master cylinder. So right now it works fine. There's no binding. I got full range of motion here on both of them. Um, we know that those pedals are where they're supposed to be based upon how I set it up at the beginning of the video. Um, so we now have everything in place. Unfortunately, this process took about five or six weeks because we had three delays along the way. We started it quite a while ago. Um, first one, it just took a while for us to get the master cylinder and the booster. Then I had to buy a second rod. And then, of course, um, the other thing was that we wanted to use the actual, I think it's an S10 clutch master cylinder because it works perfectly fine. But the issue is, is that the way it's set up, this section here would actually hang below the frame. So that basically forced us to go out and get an aftermarket clutch master cylinder for this application. So anyways, we're done now. We have both of them in. Um, that's the end of this video. Uh, next up for the 40 Plymouth, the intention is to go and put the engine and transmission in, make those mounts for it. But that's on an up company, upcoming video. Sorry about that. Um, so that's it for this one. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, send me a comment or send me a direct message through Instagram or Facebook, however you want to get in touch with me. Um, but please like, share, tag, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week, and everybody have a good one. Take care.